Hello and welcome to episode 1 of my beginner's tutorial series for Dyson Sphere program. I'm Icon and this series will guide you step by step through everything you need to know to build one of these beautiful Dyson Spheres like the one in the background here. I will take a lot of effort to make this series very beginner compatible. That means we're going to pick this game up with nothing. I'm not going to in induce you to the best and most efficient builds right from the get-go. We're going to start out small, we're going to make our mistakes, analyze them, and get better out of that. Of course, I will... the experience I have with the game will seep through, but I really t want to take a lot of effort to not overwhelm you guys with just, uh, you know, very efficient solutions, which I personally deem as one of the major fun parts of the game to find out yourself. So I'm going to introduce a couple of methods I like to use, and you're very invited to share your own game knowledge, your own ideas, and if there are ever any questions or topics that you want to see handled more precisely or with a known episode, drop me a comment and I'll see what I can do. Even if it's going to be a separate video out of a series, no problem. Alright, with that out of the way, let's get finally started with the game. So, new game coming up, and what you see here is your neighborhood, which you're going to work with. The center star, the one with the little yellow circle around, that's where we're going to start. And don't care about the whole metadata thing right now, that's to explain it real quick progression between gameplay sessions so you have an incentive for replayability here we're going to dive through that topic during the series of course as well up here is the cluster seed that's just the number the system uses to generate your neighborhood the amount of stars that we have here trust me when i say that 32 stars would be absolutely enough for your first gameplay but we're greedy people, so we're taking 64. It's not really necessary. You see here all manner of different star systems. Doesn't really matter too much. We're going to explore what that means in the course of the series. We're keeping the resource multiplayer at a one time. You can just uh, adjust that to very difficult or very generous ratings. And since this is going to be a very or this is supposed to be a normal playthrough, we're going to not stick with the sandbox mode, of course. We're going to through going through all the hardships the game has in store for us. I'm going to use this cluster seed. I'm going to put that into the description box as well, so you can play along with that if you want to. And let's just start the game. You can't really configure here anything too directly. You can't just randomize the the environment, but we're just going to take it as it is. The more experienced you grow, the more information this environment here yields for you. But like I promised, it's a beginner's guide. We're going to get into this with the assumption that we have really no clue what we're doing here. And I personally always dislike it if I have to take too much of this stuff um, up front. So we're now going to crash land on our, uh, or no, we're going to land on our mission. So the game's goal is quite simply said, we're supposed to build a Dyson Sphere for our civilization which happens to live in a digital sphere, if I know if I know it correctly. And they need juice, they need power. I'm piloting a big mech, and I'm going to set up a Dyson Sphere to feed the citizens of our empire. Pretty cool background story, to be fair. And we're going to be automatically guided here to our planet. It's a pretty cool sight, and you already get here a little bit of a glimpse of the traveling system in the future. So everything you see here is actually, well, how to put it, traversable, usable. This is your oyster. Practically all of these, or, well, many of these uh, little dots in the distance that you see are star systems. Of course, all the planets are accessible too. And this is going to be our starting planet. We're going to land there. And that's where we're starting out our journey. So, of course, our trip is going to be a long one because we're just one super mech and we don't have much on us to get started with. We're going to have to set up a starting environment, the good old starter base, if you are familiar to these concepts like with games of, uh, of Factorio. So the, the roadmap to begin with is we're going to set up a base camp here on this planet and we're going to set up a facility where we can reproduce our materials expansion-wise 
and a facility where we can do research to unlock new technologies. Because you can download technologies from the mother brain, so to say, and uh, we can build these things then. So, control-wise, WASD moves the mech, you can also right-click him, and uh, holding down the mouse wheel lets you rotate, and yeah, that's, that's the basics. We're going to skip on these. And down here, you see something very important, the battery bar. This is our power. If that runs low, we're going to be very, very slow. It doesn't kill us to be without power, but we're really, really slow. Pressing C opens up your inventory, where you see your mech suit, your fuel chamber, and an option to customize your armor. Pretty fancy stuff. We're not going to cover this in this series because it's serious graphic design behind that, but you get the idea. So C gets you all to all these things. You see here, fuel chamber is empty, inventory is empty. We really should get going here. But one good piece of news, while you're not moving, you're not eating up any energy whatsoever. So we're going to get on over to one of these trees, and as you see here, when you mouse over it, a little tree icon appears, and if you right-click it, our dude gets on over there and chops it up. So, we uh, now own logs and plant fuel. Let's press C again, and if you check them out there, according to the tooltips, all these things are providing energy. You see in the stats, fuel chamber generation minus 30%, minus 10 person this means that if you are using them for your mech they are going to be less efficient than if you are using them for thermal generators which just burn stuff to produce energy most basic form of power plant we're going to use later on so we're going to use these things here and uh, just uh, left click them once and you have them on the cursor and that's one easy way to get them and as you see here now this stuff is now being burned instead of depleting our battery. And if the battery ever gets depleted, you get to get, uh, you, these things will get burned to replenish it. You can also hold down left control and left click it. And as you see here, it's going to be transported into your mech right away. So this is going to be our, our start here. How we're going to replenish our fuel for it now. We're going to eat up trees. Not the worst start. You can also pick up all manner of different things, so example there's stone and here we see something else that's an iron deposit when you mouse over these you see that there's 10k 4.4k it's six iron veins this is going to be something we're going to use later as well as with the stone there are mining nodes for that stuff as well just wanted to showcase that you can pretty much pick up everything even those little shrubs here yield a little bit of plant fuel okay but that's not all we want to do we are going to look at the replicator now. Pressing F opens up the replicator, or you could also call it the crafting menu, however you fancy. So in the replicator, you can craft items. These are mostly intermediates. So here we can transform iron ore into iron ingots and the like. And in this uh, tab, we can set up buildings. As you see here, there's not really much we can do right now. So we, got, we are going to set on our site into the technology tree. You can also press T. And as you see here, this is our technology tree. These are all the technologies that we're going to use to finish the game with. The last one is going to be the mission completed technology. It's a long trip. And the first technology that we're going to get on here is electromagnetism. Electromagnetism will unlock ourselves wind turbines Tesla towers and mining machines, just the stuff that we need. Power production, these are basically working like power cord towers. And we see here research consumption, we need 10 magnetic coils. So that's our first quest, I should say. So let's activate that. And as you see here, there's a lack of research items. So we now have to discover how to produce these magnetic coils. So let's press escape and get on out of here and get back into the replicator. In the replicator, we check out the items tab again, and we see here the magnetic coil consists out of magnets and copper ingots. So magnets we can produce out of iron ore. Luckily, we have some iron ore right next door. 
So let's pick up a, a couple of them. Once you right click that, as you see here, your mech goes into a perpetual mining operation and it doesn't cost you any energy to remain here. As you see here, um, not really, or oh, it does cost me a little bit of energy to mine actually, sorry. But you get the idea, it's not really much. So we're going to need two magnets to produce two magnetic coils. So that means for 10 magnetic coils, we're going to need 10 magnets, obviously. So we're going to produce 10 of these guys. You can set up here the amount up to a maximum of 10. Press the button and it goes into your replication queue. You have in your inventory always the option to research, to, to build things by yourself. So now we are a little bit um, insecure, you know, there's not really any visual markers where to go next. So you can zoom out a bit. And as you see, you might already notice that here, there's a stone vein. Back there, there's more stone vein. So we're just going to rotate our view. And down here in the lower left corner, you also see the planet thumbnail. And don't you worry, in the future, you will gain technologies which will highlight all those ore veins for you. But we're just starting out, so things suck a little. So I already can catch a glimpse behind those trees of the copper vein here. Usually, in your neighborhood of your starting spot, you will always have copper, stone, coal, and iron. That's practically always the case. So we're going to pick up a couple of copper ore units now there. As you see here, we're now depleting the last bit of our plant fuel, hopping on over to the logs. So there is a constant need for us to uh, refuel the mech. This is a game mechanic you're not going to get rid of so far, but it's pretty cool actually. So back into the replicator, you see now we need iron and we need copper ingots for that. But actually, there's a cool feature you can just select magnetic coils, and the game will now automatically pre-produce all the stuff we need. Pretty nifty, pretty useful. So now the magnetic coils are being produced, and you see the research is automatically being done. As long as the check mark here is uh, in use inventory items the research will automatically consume items out of your inventory to use them for research. You shouldn't uncheck this unless you have a good reason to do so. So we have now unlocked electromagnetism. Wonderful. So this gives us the ability to produce power plants and miners. So we don't have to we don't have to pick up the ore manually all the time. Neat, isn't it? So let's press F one more time. And as you see here now on the buildings tab, we have a couple of things. So the Tesla tower is one thing and the wind turbine is another and there's the mining machine. As you see here, these things need all manner of dif different uh, items, but it's very easy to uh, summarize the very most of these items consist out of copper and iron, but luckily you get a little bit of a head start here. When you unlock the technology, you gain these items at least once, so we can use them right now. So let's place down a wind turbine. You place them down and you see that blue circle. That blue circle is a highlighter how much distance, um, this is practically a distancing thing, Within the blue circle, no other wind turbine can be. You need to have that much of, dis of a distance between two of these. And now we're going to go over to our landing pad and uh, we're going to disassemble this one here by just right clicking it. This does take a moment, as you see here, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of time passing until the circle is gone. But first off, it's in our way, and second off, you see here, it yields iron ingot magnet and copper ingot, so you can just get your starting research done without mining if you want to. But I felt like I wanted to explain the whole concept of hand picking and hand crafting here for a second, but we, we won't go on like that, because I personally don't like that too much. So, we're going to pick up one of these mining machines, you can either pick them up out of your inventory, to place them somewhere or you can also go here into the bar down there and you see here in the section 2 gathering 
you have the mining machine as well. It's up to you how you want to uh, do this. So you see here now, there's the mining nodes and there's the mining machine and you see this arc in front of the mining machine. If you press R, you can rotate it. Your job is to get as many of these ore veins as possible into the front arc. As you see here, a white circle depicts how many you have there. I personally recommend you strongly to hold down shift and press R now. And sadly, you can only rotate into one direction, but this way you can unsnap from the grid. And as you see here, with this here, I'm able to, to pick up an angle where I can hit all the veins at once. I've just left click, and that's what we want to go for. There we go. So as you see here, this thing is now out of power. Down here, we can set up Tesla towers. And as you see there, well, it's a bit far and it doesn't reach. So we did a bit of a mistake. No biggie. We can just press X to dismantle a facility and we get it back into our inventory. No problem. So wind power is quite, uh, quite fair and easy. The wind power, as far as I know, is everywhere the same on the planet. Not quite realistic, but it's quite easy. So we have two methods. We can now set up the wind turbine just right next to the mining machine. While there's uh, this blue circle, not only the distancing uh, method, it is also showing how far the power reaches. So let's produce ourselves another wind turbine here. And as you see here, this mining machine now happily allocates iron ore for us, so we don't need to do that manually. Neat, eh? So, there we go. As a matter of fact, now I was wrong, sorry guys, I'm, I'm really uh, spreading misinformation here. Actually, the distance between two of these guys is uh, even a little, bit, uh, a little bit larger than that. So... To see there's this is too close and this is the closest you can't get between two but since we're not utilizing wind power too much uh, that's also the reason why i was wrong there it's not that important wind power will be not in your portfolio for a terribly long time so now we're going to produce ourselves a new mining machine as you see here all the parts wheeze out here automatically until at the end of the line we're producing the mining machine quite easily. I want to slap down the second one right away. As we see here, here we can catch all of them quite easily. Well, let's do the same thing here. Just going to connect that bad boy there. And with this, we can now just pick up these materials. You can just left click there and the entire entire content of that machine empties into your pocket and now we have at least the building materials we need quite automatic we're lacking stone but more about that later let's check out the the technology tree one more time so we get a highlighter on these is there anything we can do yeah here mech core but these are upgrades for your mech we're going to cover them later just was curious what was pinging me there so we're now going to see new technologies so automatic metallurgy will unlock smelters very nifty so we don't have to smelt that ore into plates in our pockets anymore it also unlocks the production of glass which we can't do as of yet we can unlock the electromagnetic matrix technology which will unlock the production of these matrixes these are basically science cubes we will use these guys as a material for consumption in the future. While these starter technologies all will need magnetic coils, circuit boards, and uh, similar things, later down the road, the technology will only need these cubes anymore. So we're going to start out with automatic metallurgy, basic assembling of these technologies, and the uh, electromagnetic matrix we're going to take as the last one, because that's probably also where we're going to end today's episode so as you see here now we're going to need these things and you can also just step on over to a machine hold control and uh, left click there to pick up all the ore out of the machine and it this works for pretty much all of these things so we now know what we need we need magnetic coils 
press F and just produce a bunch. This will be very easy by this point. And we're going to need a couple of circuit boards. These are consisting out of iron ingots and copper ingots. No biggie. We know we already have all the material necessary for that. That's why I wanted to set up the miners right from the get-go, because they really provide you with everything you need. But as you see here, we're now quite busy producing these plates in our pocket, and that's one reason why this technology will help us so much. I mean, this is not a terribly long waiting time, but these things add up, and that's why we're going to head on for automation as quick as possible, of course. So, let's do this. As you see here, now circuit boards are being produced, and I'm overproducing again, and now the research ticks down. As you see here, research always has a certain time until it uh, goes through. That's the hashes. So, here you see, you have 60 hash per second, and the entire technology consists out of 1,800 hashes. So basically, under ideal circumstances, we're still going to need 30 seconds to unlock this technology, because 1,800 divided through 60 is 30. So, to give you an uh, impression about what these weird numbers down here mean, mean data volume. And so that's basically the uh, complete amount of research points that a technology yields and you get a little bit of an information while mouse overing it how much equivalency that has but we're going to talk about these things later down the road so i want the assemblers next the assemblers are going to be the machines that will produce all these things that we are right now manually producing in our pockets automatically for us while the furnaces or the smelters are going to be very specific the assemblers are extremely versatile so we're going to set up our first smelter here just into the vicinity of the wind power turbine and let's check this out so this thing here is eating up 24 kilowatt and this thing is eating up 20, uh, 12 kilowatt and this thing is producing 300 kilowatt looking good so far we can also connect these uh, things here with one Tesla tower in between, and then they're able to form a power network which shares the generation capacity between each other. Pretty useful, and definitely should be done always to make sure that you share the power in an efficient way. So, smelter set up, also left click it, and we have to pick up a recipe here. There you see, that's everything the smelter can do. Technically, you can also select the buildings tab, but you can't produce any buildings in the smelter. So we're going to set up a recipe for iron ingots, and we're just going to help hold down left control again and left click that thing. And now the smelter merrily produces these things for us automatically. Let's slap down another of these dudes right next to this one. We could put it down right next to the copper, but I already know that these smelters are only a temporary thing. We're not going to use these for a longer period of time, because this is just the, the starter stuff. So you see we're out of iron here for the Tesla Tower. Let's pick up from the Arc Smelter. Good stuff, isn't it? So we are somehow... Here you can see the actual borders of your power generation. So let's set that up like that. Is that inside the border? Yeah. So we're now setting up a copper ingot and same thing here, dropping the ore inside there just to make sure we're not going to produce all these ingots all on our own. This already speeds up your handcrafting procedure by a ton. So next step, we're going to go into the, the electromagnetic matrix technology. So you see here, magnetic coils and circuit boards are necessary. That's not really a new thing. Let's ignore that. And we're going to produce these parts now. Let's grab some plates while we're at it. Especially the copper plates we're pretty empty with. And this guy has no more ore. Let's pick up some ore and manually deposit it. But you already might might guess it, we're not going to work on like that 
forever we're going to automate things there too so i can't build any magnets because i don't have any iron ore anymore that's an interesting thing magnets are kind of an odd job uh, odd nut how to call however you want to call them magnets are also made in the smelter i find that very anti-intuitive but they're made in the smelter out of iron ore so as you see here now our power grid is showing first signs of weakness so that happens when you just have too many things plugged in and i was basically merely waiting for this to happen because you know i knew that i knew what i was doing to my system there so we're going to build a new wind turbine first so our system can work further this is a very very slow uh, small scale facility but compared to where we started you might already notice that we are actually already a lot more self-sufficient than before also these guys form a grid across each other so if they are close enough you don't need a tesla tower to connect them to feed more power into the grid so we are now going to research the these things here so let's see we're going to need those bad boys and you see here we're producing them now directly no longer do we go over pre-production so this is the speed up i was talking about all right so we're now only able to do this like that it's a quite shameful way of getting yourself along but at the beginning of the game it's just how it is But with these materials that these smelters here provide, we're getting somewhere. Also noticing that I'm running out of power. So we have matrix labs and electric electromagnetic matrices unlocked. Gosh, can't talk. So. Very, very important next technology here is the basic logistics system. Ah, I thought I need the cubes for that, I'm sorry. I thought I need already research for that. Okay, so basic logistics system is unlocking conveyor belts, sorters, and storages, and that's going to unlock some real automation for us. That's going to be where we really, where we really, really want to be next. So, let's do this and refuel the mech in between. Keep in mind that trees and biofuel and the like are really suboptimal but most of the time you don't really have much usage for that stuff and if you just place on buildings on these thingies here you're just going to destroy them and not yield the returns unless they changed that in a version or, or two ago so it's really worth it to uh, do this to grab this stuff in the early phase of the game later on just ignore it because you just have better better methods than that Right now we were also we would be also practically able to go for coal, but that would be too much for this episode. Next episode we're going to use better fuel. So we have now unlocked logistics. So I'm going to show this as the last thing for this episode. Logistics. We have now conveyor belts. Conveyor belts are made out of iron plates and iron gear wheels, so they're iron and iron. And as you see here, the machine here has an exit box highlighted by this light gray thing and if we just left click while we're hovering over the machine we can now weave a conveyor belt over there so what we want is left click that and we want to let that conveyor belt move along there so you see now we have an output the ore is now going to be transported automatically on top of the conveyor belt and now the next thing we're going to use is the sorter we're going to set that onto the grid first uh, onto the belt first and then drag it to the machine to tell this machine to shove the ore into the smelter and that's how we're automating the production of iron plates for real so let's pick up this arc smelter here press x to dismantle it and we're going to put this bad boy down here production smelter let's put him on the opposite side of the belt reconfigure him for 
these. Give that poor old sod a little bit of power. Head on over to the other sorter. Get back to the belt. And left click the belt. Connect it to the machine. And now we don't have to deposit the ore manually anymore. Wonderful, isn't it? And that's where I'm going to leave you folks. Of course, the smelter now should go over to that mining machine and so on and so forth. But there's a lot of other things that we're going to cover in the next episode. Next episode, we're going to set up a lab. We're going to start researching for real. I'm also going to talk about how we're going to produce these plates in a... Uh, in a in a reasonable and useful way okay i hope you found that helpful i hope you guys like the series so far feel free to drop me your comment leave me some feedback i'm always happy to hear from you and leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed that video that really helps a lot too consider subscribing to the channel i do days i do daily videos so you're really in for a treat if you like strategy gaming and the like and also in the description box you will find links to my discord where you can find like-minded gamers including me and you also find my twitch channel where i do regular streams and last but not least if you would mind checking out the support links that are there i would be very very grateful thank you so much for your time watching this video until this very point where i'm just doing filthy advertisement for myself i appreciate that and wish you a wonderful day I hope to see you on the next episode. Bye-bye.